All right, we're going to go ahead and open up a new example scene here. Let's go ahead and open this thing up. We're looking for a scene called 12 Start. So I'll open that up. And what you see here is an asset here from the warehouse scene that I did. Uh, this is a very simple asset. As you can see, let's check out the wireframes. Just basically two objects. This one wall object with a high-res detail texture on it that has some damage in it. And then pretty much I went ahead and chipped away some of the geometry and punch these holes through it to make it look like it's damaged. It's very low res, very primitive. And you can see here we also have uh, these metal bars that are in the middle. Uh, rebar, as I believe they're called, that go inside these concrete walls for just to reinforce the walls and stuff like that. I went ahead and created these and put these inside the wall. Makes it look more realistic, uh, makes it look more natural and believable, which looks pretty cool. But we could take this a uh, step further, or actually about 10 steps further using ZBrush and incorporating that in the workflow. This object here was not created in ZBrush. It's just a polygonal object created in 3D. Very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to create something similar but of much higher quality. And we're going to be using ZBrush to get that done. Okay. So what I'm going to do is let me take these objects here that I don't no longer need and I'm going to hide those guys. I'm going to turn on my grid snapping and I'm going to create myself a polygon plane. Here's my plane. Uh, for the subdivisions here, what I'm going to do is go with about 8 and 8. For the size of this object, I'll go with about 10 units by 10 units. It's kind of a square sort of object here. I'm also going to rotate this guy about 90 degrees. So it's facing this way, more like a wall. Essentially, what we're going to do is a wall, uh, a damaged old wall that we're going to detail and sculpt inside a ZBrush. So what we want to do now is create a base mesh that we can take into ZBrush and work with. Um, this base mesh is going to be created using sub D's, so I'm going to make sure that it subdivides properly, and I'm going to keep this as quads. I'm going to make sure that all the polygons stay as quads, four-sided polygons. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do now is convert this to an editable poly, and I'm going to take this guy and let me take snapping off. I'm going to move it forward a little bit from the grid. I'm going to go to polygon mode. I'm going to start to select some uh, polys here. So what polys do I want to select? And I could actually go over here and switch over to raycast mode so that you know you can select this a lot easier. So I'm going to select some of these polys here that are kind of in the middle. Um, I'm going to hold down control and just select some of these guys. So basically what you want to do is create some kind of a hole in the object, something like this. Uh, this looks good right here. So I'm going to take these polygons and I'm going to extrude these actually. So I'm going to extrude them, push them in a bit to about right there. And actually, you know what I'll do? I'm going to go ahead and just move these, use the transform type in. And that's not, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, I'm going to move them in the Y to 0. So that they're in the middle of the grid right there, which is perfect. And I'm going to take these polys and delete them. I'm going to go ahead and take this object, get myself a symmetry modifier. I'm going to make this in the Y axis, or uh, let me try out, the Z works out pretty good right here. I want to take the mirror object and I want to move it to about right here, it looks pretty good. To give this thing some, a little bit of width, that's going to work out pretty good. So I'm going to collapse the modifier stack, and that, that's pretty good. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to finish this off. So let me take these border edges up here, and I'm going to go to bridge, bridge that stuff together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a Turbo Smooth modifier on top of this. So let me go down here to Turbo Smooth. I'm going to go back to my editable poly, show the end result in the stack. Um, in Turbo Smooth, let me turn on the Isoline uh, display and give this a couple of iterations. I'm going to go back to editable poly and I'm going to start working with this. This is basic sub D modeling at this point. What I'm going to do is take this loop of edges right there. I'm going to chamfer that stuff. Uh, I'm going to chamfer this to the edges. So move the chamfer to the edges to sharpen that up a little bit. I'm going to hit the plus key right there. I'm going to start to sharpen this stuff up. So I'm going to select this ring right here. Let me see. Let me take this ring of edges right there. And I'm going to use the connect tool. And actually, let me not do that. Let me take, I already have an edge loop right there. So I'm going to take this edge loop and I'm going to do a chamfer. And then I'm going to push the chamfer to the outer edges up there to the top and bottom. So this is basic sub-D modeling, very basic stuff. I actually created a tutorial 
some time ago with Sudley modeling. I've done it for uh, for doing basics and intro subdies. So if you want to check that out, go ahead and it'll show you how to do this kind of stuff. So I'm not going to get into it too deep. Don't worry about being too accurate. Don't be a perfectionist with this. This object is going to change drastically inside of ZBrush. All right, so I think you get the idea. I'm just going to keep adding more and more um, connections here and chamfering just to add more detail to this. Again, it's basic sub-D modeling 101. I'm going to go ahead and get that done real quick, and I'm going to pause the video, skip ahead, and I'll uh, meet you when uh, when we get this done. So I worked a bit on this. Uh, I added, you know, subdivisions and things. Um, went ahead and added some more edges and stuff to control the mesh better. So this is the base mesh that we end up with. Uh, when we take it into ZBrush and subdivide it, it's going to look something like this initially. I'm going to take the Turbo Smooth modifier. don't need it anymore, so I'm going to get rid of it. So this is our base mesh. It's all made of quads, no end guns and no triangles. This is what ZBrush likes. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, base mesh for ZBrush, and we're going to export it out. So let's go to Export. I'm going to go to Export Selected, and uh, I'm going to export this out. And again, I'm going to go with my naming convention that I like to use. So I'm going to call this damaged wall from 3ds Max. That way I know what this object is from, where it's coming from, all that stuff. Um, over here, I'm going to go with the ZBrush preset. It's going to work out just fine. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and hit export. Pretty simple. All right. So the, uh, the next step is to pretty much go into ZBrush and start sculpting this object away. So we'll look at sculpting techniques and some more advanced methods of sculpting in ZBrush in the next video.